What's up guys, welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Uh, tonight we're gonna be reviewing the RX4 Alpha. So, had a lot of positive feedback on the Ultra review, but a lot of guys wanted to know what the shorter version can do. Uh, for you guys who like a little more compact bow, maybe you're hunting in a tree stand or a ground blind, or just like a shorter axle to axle bow, this is definitely gonna be one you wanna watch. So far I really like what I see and feel out of this bow. It's just a little bit that I've shot it, but I'm excited to see what it can do through the chronograph and uh, hopefully give you guys some good information uh, in, that will help you aid in making a decision for a bow this upcoming season. So stick tight, we'll be right back with the RX4 Alpha. Oh yeah. All right, so this is the 2020 brand new Hoyt RX4 Alpha. Um, pretty similar platform to last year's RX3, but they've made some pretty key changes that I think are really gonna benefit people who like a little more compact bow. Uh, so jumping right into the technical side of things, this bow is 29 and a half inches axle to axle, so it's actually a full inch shorter than last year's, which was at 30 and a half. That surprised me a little bit at first. I thought they'd either keep it the same or maybe go a hair longer, but I think because they have the Ultra Series already, they thought they'd give the consumer a little bit more compact version. Um, you know, whether you're a spot and stock guy and you're belly crawling a lot with your bow, or you're in tight quarters in a tree stand or a ground blind, this bow is highly maneuverable. It's not gonna be cumbersome. You know, I can strap it to my pack if I'm riding a bike and the, the, my arrows aren't gonna be hanging down and hitting the back tire. Um, so really compact, maneuverable bow. Um, it's still uh, still 342 feet a second, which they maintain the exact same speed as last year, but they've actually increased the brace height by an eighth of an inch. So the RX3 was a six inch brace height. This is a six and an eighth inch brace height. Now that may not sound like anything, but honestly, any little bit of forgiveness that I can get out of a bow in my mind is, is a benefit. Um, for you target shooters or 3D shooters, you know the margin of error between catching a line and not catching a line is I mean, it's literally, you know, hundreds of an inch. It can be just a fraction of an inch. So Bo, maybe last year where I would have been just out, maybe this year I'd be just in on that same shot because that arrow is getting off that string just a fraction of a second sooner. You know, poor form is not going to influence that arrow as badly. Um, so being able to maintain the same speed with giving you a little more forgiveness, I think is a, a big uh, benefit. Um, it, it comes in at 3.9 pounds, so it's three tenths of a pound lighter than last year's RX3. I think that's mostly due to just being, there's less riser here, right? So it's an inch shorter, so you got a half inch less material on each side. Um, but I also think they just lighten it up a little bit in general. They got a little bit different riser bridge in the aluminum portion of it here and uh, lighten it up a little bit. It is very well balanced, even though it's shorter and, and a little bit lighter, this bow, you know, when I put it in my hand, it, it just wants to sit there. It doesn't, it doesn't want to tip all around. It doesn't feel like it's going to have a lot of torque to it. Um, so I think that's a real benefit right there. Um, being at 29 and a half inches, you know, this might, might not be the bow for you guys with the real long draws. You know, if you're 29 to 30 inches, again, it's totally personal preference. Um, but it, it, that string angle might get a little bit severe. Having said that, because of the size of the cams here, when this bow is at full draw, the string is actually coming off, you know, the, the cam up here. So it, it, the string angle feels like that of a little bit longer bow. Uh, so even though it's short axle to axle length, the string angle isn't as severe on some other short models out there. So I, I really like that. Um, you know, being at 342 feet a second, obviously this is no slouch on speed. Um, a lot of that speed is coming out of the well, all that speed pretty much is coming out of the cam here. And so this is the new ZTR cam. Last year was the ZT Pro. And while it does have a similar shape to it, uh, they have made some pretty key changes to it. So the first and foremost thing is uh, the draw stops here. So last year you had the rotating module, but then you had to match uh, a little post to the position of the module. And having a small little round post like that, if you really bury into that back wall, because that pressure point is smaller, you get a little bit of sponge in the cam. With this draw stop, because it's flat right here, I'm spreading out that pressure over a larger surface area, larger surface area, and so it gives it a really, really solid feel in the back wall. Um, these are the 85% mods. They do offer an 80% module in this, if you guys like a little bit lower let off, and that's probably gonna feel even more solid in the back wall. Um, 
Another couple features that they made that I really like is from a technician standpoint is A, not having to match the post with, uh, with the module saves a lot of time. You know, we've had a lineup of guys wanting to shoot this bow. So when I'm swapping, swapping draw lengths, you know, this is saving me probably a minute every time I have to do it, which over the course of the day adds up a lot. So for those of you who may, you know, own a shop or work at a shop, um, you know, this is a really, really nice feature. Uh, the second thing they did was last year, you know, all you, all you had to, to reference where the module was, was where the little peg was in these holes and the limb actually covered the longer draw lengths in it. So like, like D through F was kind of obscured by the limb. And a lot of times we would get guys that came in and they said, yeah, I you know, got my draw length adjusted a little bit and something just doesn't feel right. Like the, the valley feels really weird. I'm not getting good arrow flight. The bow has a lot of vibration. And when we take it apart and look at it, lots of times they'd have one module in the D position and one module in the F position. And it was because when they were rotating it, they thought they were in the right hole, but because that limb obscured it, they couldn't really see. So this year they, they moved the number or the letters away from the limb and then they also put this little window right here. So you can see that E in that little window. So there's no question as to where the position of my module is. I can see through that little window exactly what letter I'm setting the module to. Um, you know, that's just one of those little things that they probably got complaints about and they said, okay, that's an easy fix. You know, let's make this so that it's, it's just less of a headache for the consumer. So that's a really cool little a uh, little upgrade there. Uh, in terms of like the riser shape, obviously it's a little bit shorter. There's a slightly different configuration in the aluminum portion here on these little riser bridges, um, but it's a super stiff riser. You're not gonna get any play out of this. It's very consistent. You know, Hoyt spends a lot of time and money um, getting these things engineered just exactly the same bow to bow. Um, you know, one thing about carbon versus aluminum is I think the, the consistency in the material can vary if when companies build these, these carbon bows that are actually more of like a, an injection mold, it's like a plasticky carbon. I'm not gonna name any names, but we see some. And I mean, some of their risers, literally when you draw the bow, you can watch the riser torque and twist. Um, you're not gonna get that with this bow. So pretty much, you know, the biggest upgrade is gonna be in the cams. Um, they still have the same grip that I can maneuver left and right. Again, I haven't seen a lot of a lot of change in the tune of the bow by moving that grip right or left, but sometimes just based on the shape of your hand, um, being able to move that grip out or in a little bit will will put less torque up against the shelf here. So you can get you know minimal contact, which obviously is going to translate into more accuracy. So um, still a really comfortable grip. I think Hoyt has some of the most comfortable grips in the game. Um, you know, you have your standard, your stabilizer mount here, which is a little bit offset. So rather than like on my Matthews, which is just in line with the grip, and then I have the offset bracket, they just offset this for you so that when you get your quiver on there, it doesn't change the balance of the bow a whole bunch. Uh, and then you've got your rear stabilizer mount on this as well. So for those of you who want to run a back bar, you know, I can just mount it right to the back here. I don't have to have the big bracket up front. Um, really, really slick little system. You know, you still got your string stops. Um, that, that is adjustable. You know, generally you want about a credit card's width between the string and the stop so that the stop is not influencing the string before the arrow's off, uh, off the D loop there. So, you know, that, that hasn't changed from last year. They've had that for a while, uh, but it's still a nice feature. So in terms of feel of this bow, um, you know, what I've noticed again is a more solid back wall because of those draw stops. Uh, the RX3 drew incredibly smooth, and I think this bow has maintained that, if not even gone, maybe a, a little better. Um, it stacks in a little bit different spot just because of the geometry of the bow. So it seems to stack a little bit further back, but it still doesn't, you know, there's some bows where you get back and it's like right before it breaks, it, it feels like it just stays at that peak weight. This has a pretty nice draw force curve. It kind of rolls into it and then rolls out. Um, again, I said it's very well balanced. Uh, for being a lighter short bow, I think this aims a lot better than other shorter bows. You know, I shot the Triax a couple years ago and I, I really fought that bow. Um, great little bow, accurate, all that, but you know, I didn't realize how much I was fighting the aim of it until I, uh, until I got that traverse in my hand and was like, oh, this is how a bow is supposed to aim. Um, this bow doesn't seem to have that problem. It seems to aim a lot better. Now, granted, I've been shooting it right-handed, but I've been doing it enough now to where I can actually get a pretty good feel for a bow, even though I'm shooting it right-handed when I'm left-handed. Um, and this bow feels great. So 
Uh, again, this boat this boat came out of the box at like 72 pounds, so I took a half turn off the limb bolts here to get it right at 70 um, to give you guys a true to spec review here. So I'm gonna go get the chronograph all set up. Um, gonna run arrows ranging from the 500 grain range down to like 376, and I'm gonna shoot it at uh, at 28 and 30 inches, which brings me back to the cams actually. Last year the three cam went to 27 to 30. The three cam this year goes 28 to 30. So not quite the same draw length range there, um, but I think it increases the efficiency of that cam a little bit. So excited to see what this thing can do. This is the three cam. They do make it in a two cam, which will go, you know, your 25 and a half to 28. Um, so full, full length or full range of draw lengths there for you guys. So anyway, I'm gonna get that chronograph all set up. I'm excited to see what this bow can do. I think you are going to be impressed. So stick, stick tight. All right, so we got the chronograph all set up here. Uh, again, this is the 2020 Hoyt RX4 Alpha. This is at exactly 70 pounds. This is at 30 inches. Uh, first arrow I have, this is a, oh, don't fall. This is a 509 grain arrow. So for those of you who like to run a real heavy arrow hunting, draws really smooth actually. So 275. Next arrow is gonna be, this is a 476 grain arrow, pretty common hunting weight. Two eighty-eight. It's a pretty big jump there. Uh, this next arrow, this is four forty-two. So really common hunting weight, you know, right around that four fifty mark. Super solid back wall. Two ninety-six. So thirty inches with a four hundred and almost fifty grain arrow, four hundred and forty-two grain arrow, almost three hundred feet a second. That's moving. Uh, this is going to be, this is a 421 grain arrow, so call it 420. 308, <laughs> so that's cooking. You're going to push an arrow that's, you know, well over 400 grains at almost 310 feet a second, that's, that's cooking. And last but not least, this is a 376 grain arrow, so lighter than you'd use for hunting. Um, but a real common weight for like a 3D arrow. Three twenty. So that's cruising. Um, I'm I'm impressed by those speeds. It's really really smooth on the shot. I think pretty similar to the to the RX three. Um, I don't notice a big difference in noise. Obviously, I don't have like a decibel meter or anything like that. Um, but it doesn't seem like a major difference in noise. Um, you know, this only has the one little string donut in it that comes from the factory, so you could, you know, probably put some other string silencers on there and, and get, get a little less noise out of it even. Um, so now I'm gonna change this up to 28 inches, and we're gonna run the exact same arrows uh, and see what it can do for uh, 28 inch draw length. All right, so I've got this adjusted down to 28 inches. Now, this is a three cam at 28, so it's shortened all the way up. A number two cam at 28 is gonna be lengthened all the way out. Uh, what that's gonna do for you is basically the cam is gonna be more efficient in the number two cam than the three cam in this because I'm, I'm getting a full rotation out of the cam, whereas on the three cam, I'm under rotating it slightly, so it's not quite as efficient. Uh, last year with the RX3s, when I tested them, it was about 14 feet a second difference between a two and a three cam um, at 28 inches. So when you're watching this, you know, if you're wondering what a two cam can do, I would add about 12 to 14 feet a second to all of these numbers, and that should give you a pretty good idea. Uh, but again, this is the RX4, number three cam, 70 pounds, 28 inches. Two fifty-six. This is gonna be a 400 and uh, 476 grain arrow. Two sixty-seven. So pretty good jump there. This next arrow is going to be. This is four hundred and forty-two grains. So pretty common hunting weight. Two sixty-eight. Oh. <laughs> that 
going a little quick. I'm gonna redo that one. <laughs> Got a little, a little hot on that trigger. All right, 442 grains. Two seventy three. This is a four hundred and twenty one grain arrow. This is an Axis three forty, cut at like twenty nine inches. This is going to be a really really common arrow that I would put somebody in with a setup like this. So this should be a pretty realistic like hunting setup speed here. Two eighty four. So pretty good. And last but not least, this is the 376 grain arrow. So super light. 291. So, again, kind of like the Ultra, I was actually more impressed what it did with the heavier arrows than the lighter arrows. Um, but those are all pretty standard speeds for a bow that IBOs like this. So. Pretty much on par with the speeds from last year's RX3, which I would expect because they spec out the exact same. Um, you know, some takeaways though, I did really like the draw cycle on this in the 3Cam. It drew really smooth. It's got a really solid back wall to it. Um, and yeah, for a 29 inch bow, you know, I didn't, I didn't notice anything that really stood out like, ooh, like I, I don't like that being that short. Um, so if you guys are looking for a more compact bow, uh, it's going to give you a lot of performance. I think this is a great option. So head down to your local dealer, check one of these out. If you're local here, come on in and shoot it. We've got um, we've got every model in right now. We've got a demo set up in all of them. So really cool new bow from Hoyt. Like I said, they just improved upon an already awesome platform. So minor improvements, sure, but improvements nonetheless, which can't really ask for more. So thanks for watching as always. Please feel free to comment with any questions you might have. Um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It really, really helps us out. And until next time, keep them in the middle, and I'll see you on the range.